everyone, it's Dave. Thank you so much for tuning in as always. Today, we're gonna talk a little bit about Relativity Space, one of the new up and coming large rocket providers and some rumors and data that we've heard recently about troubles that they might be having and what the situation is like there. Obviously, Relativity and Rocket Lab do have a little bit of a, I won't say feud, but perhaps competition going on and uh, that makes it a little more fun. This is a potential competitor to Neutron, and I think it does make sense to check in on the progress of potential competitors to Rocket Lab when you are an investor. So there's a lot of interesting stuff going on with Relativity right now. Before we go ahead and take a look at that, though, do just want to say if you're not a subscriber already, please do consider subscribing by the end of this video. And if you are already a subscriber, well, thank you so much, and uh, I'll check out your comments down below. Okay. Let's dive into the issues around Relativity Space and the Terran R rocket. Before I dive in, I do just want to say that I got a ton of data from Eric Berger's great article on Ars Technica. So if you're not familiar with Eric, I encourage you to check out his work on Ars as well as follow him on Twitter. And he's got a great new book out following the early days of Falcon 9 reuse. And I, that book is definitely worth checking out as well. I did just finish my review copy recently, planning to do a few a full review a little later on. Okay, so if you're not super familiar with Relativity, just a quick refresher. Their big claim to fame is that they were planning to basically 3D print their entire rockets, saying that this would allow them to decrease costs and simplify their manufacturing and give them a huge advantage over more traditional rocket manufacturers. Back in June of 2021, Relativity had reportedly raised more than $1.3 billion, and its Series E funding round had valued the company at $4.2 billion, which is quite large for a company that has never launched before. With this funding, their CEO, Tim Ellis, said that they could execute on both their smaller Terran 1 rocket and develop a larger and more ambitious rocket called the Terran R, which could compete directly with the Falcon 9, as well as Rocket Lab's Neutron and a lot of other new players. The big differentiator, as I said, for the company was that they planned to 3D print their entire rockets, which no one was really doing, claiming this would allow them to reduce costs as well. Their Terran R rocket was planned to be fully reusable, something that they said would give them a big advantage over competitors as well. Quick clip here of early investor Chamath Polyhopatita touting the advantages that 3D printing would allow relativity. And the big difference between it and SpaceX, which is sort of why we did it, this is a early YC company. I did the Series A and kind of went along the whole way. They have 3D printed everything. And the reason why 3D printing is interesting is you take a... So if you, if you think a rocket costs $5 billion if built by NASA, Elon was able to take that to 100 to 500 million. And if you 3D print everything, you can take that cost to like 5 to 50 million. And so it allows you to just have this repeatability and manufacturability. Now, SpaceX also has a lot of 3D printed parts, but Relativity is entirely 3D printed. It has a launch in three weeks at Cape Canaveral, I think. And we have a, like a $10 billion order book that gets unlocked. So I don't know how to see beyond a lot of these market forecasts right now. So I'd rather pick a company. I'll pick something in my portfolio. If the rocket does not blow up, there's a $10 billion order book, and this company is now on a trajectory to be as valued as SpaceX. All right. if okay, so these are the kind of claims that allowed them to raise so much capital and build out their company and build it so large. Um, when it comes to the Terran 1 rocket, their earlier smaller one-ton class rocket, they did manage to build the whole thing using these 3D printing techniques. The whole time, though, I was hearing some comments online saying that while 3D printing does make a lot of sense for small, complex, delicate parts, such as rocket engines, for instance, it doesn't make a lot of sense for large rocket structures. It's quite a slow process, really, and as you can see from this Terran 1 body, it can leave these wavy artifacts behind as opposed to being completely straight and can be expensive as well and have some issues around it. Uh, the first launch of Terran 1 did happen in March of 2023, though, 
and was relatively <laughs> successful. Sorry for the stupid pun. Uh, the first stage performed as expected, and we did have a successful stage separation, but the second stage engine never achieved full thrust and overall uh, did not you know, get to its proper orbit. I do have to give them credit though, because this flight did surpass what a lot of new rockets achieve on their first flight. And at the time, it seemed to me like it was only a matter of time before they would be delivering customer payloads to orbit successfully. A few days later though, there was a surprise pivot from Relativity. They announced that they would completely scrap their small Terran 1 rocket and turn all their efforts towards the larger Terran R. They would also scale back their ambitious 3D printing plans, the foundation upon which most of their capital was raised and where a lot of the hype was coming from for the company, and instead use more traditional manufacturing techniques for some of their larger Terran R structures. Apparently this was at least partially due to some issues with 3D printing they were having, such as cracking and buckling of large structures. But and not only that, Terran R, which had been pitched as being fully reusable, would now be expending its second stage, so it wouldn't have that added advantage going for it either, starting to look more and more like just another rocket being built out there. There were still some bright spots, though, for relativity through all of this, mostly in the form of a large number of contracts that they were able to sign despite Terran R being years away from a first launch. As of December of last year, they had signed a whopping $1.8 billion worth of launch deals across nine customers, including Intelsat, OneWeb, Impulse, Telesat, and more. The, com the number now is rumored to be closer to $2.6 billion after signing some more launch deals, including a big one for Amazon Kuiper that a lot of people regarded with jealousy. Uh, the backlog itself isn't without controversy, though. Rocket Lab CEO Peter Beck has made his opinion on this known, saying that signing contracts this far in advance of the rocket being ready is not really worthwhile, in his opinion. Often, up-and-coming rockets will discount their early launches due to the increased risk associated with an unproven rocket as well as uncertain schedule. Additionally, you have to factor in things like inflation, the tendency for new rockets to go over budget, and this means that early discounted contracts can actually, can actually lead to steep losses for launch providers and having to fulfill those obligations and launch at a discount. According to Peter, this is what happened with their early Electron contracts, and those contracts ultimately were more of a boat anchor around the company's neck, dragging them down than an asset for the company. Now, Relativity CEO Tim Ellis strongly disagrees with this, though. He's argued that these are very real contracts with payments happening prior to launch, and he's further shared that the Terran R actually beat out Neutron for some of these launch deals, and that the deciding factor was not price, meaning that there were other reasons why Relativity was able to beat out Neutron. I'll leave you guys to decide who you believe or what you think, whether these contracts show strong demand and strong customer confidence in Terran R, or if they're just a future hole that the company is going to need to dig themselves out of in order to reach profitability, launching at a loss for the first year or two. There is one other important factor going on when you look at these contracts, though, and that is fundraising. The company certainly spends a lot of capital, and when they go through their funding rounds, they can at least point to these newest contracts as a sign saying things are going well and hopefully raise even more money for the company. We'll talk a little bit more about Relativity's financial situation a little later on, though. I will also say this for Relativity in their favor. They have shared a lot of videos of engine hot fires and test firings of their Aeon R engines that will power the Terran R rocket, and they do seem to be ahead of the game when it comes to propulsion, even if they may have struggled on the structures and body of the rocket. So full credit where credit is due there, and they've definitely been ahead of Rocket Lab's Archimedes in terms of getting their hot fires done and testing. There's been even more drama happening recently for Relativity, though, as the company tweeted out a picture showing the fairing for their Terran R, although it conspicuously had a large white card covering something at the bottom of the fairing. 
Internet sleuths quickly got to the bottom of this, realizing that the photo was actually taken inside a fairing factory of a company called Beyond Gravity, which is based in Switzerland. And at the base of the fairing apparently discloses that the hardware was built for Europe's Ariane 6 that this white place card is blocking. In this original tweet, Relativity didn't technically say that this is their fairing, only that it is the size of their fairing, but this still seemed like something that was pretty shady to me. Terran R has also been shrunk slightly to be the same width as the Ariane 6 in order to accommodate these fairings as well. Apparently, they will likely be buying pressure domes to store fuel from a European company as well. So the, so the highly touted 3D printing and vertical integration it looks like it's being abandoned here in favor of speed and just trying to get the rocket launched. Now, they're also going to have to deal with large shipping fees because this rocket is so large it can't be transported by road, meaning they're going to have to deal with barges. At one point, there was an estimated $3.5 million in shipping costs to get the rocket to its destination. I also found it pretty funny after Relativity's controversy came out on Twitter, the Rocket Lab Twitter account casually releases this post saying, we're building the world's largest carbon composite rocket, including its captive fairings, and they shared pictures of the fairings and structures as well. Uh, pretty tongue-in-cheek and pretty funny if you do ask me. Lately as well, several high-profile people on Twitter have come out criticizing that original 3D printing strategy and the pivot the company has undertaken. Ashley Vance, the author of the great book When the Heavens Went on Sale, as well as documentary Wild Wild West, said that the rev relativity space journey has been wild. They raise $1.4 billion to 3D print rocket parts at the push of the button, then end up buying fairings from some Swiss outfit and shipping rocket rocket parts thousands of miles around the wor world. I'm not sure Pivot captures the vibe. Elon Musk actually replied to this one as well with just one word saying that it had been inevitable. We also had a VC, an early investor in SpaceX and Tesla, say that 3D printing huge cylinders and domes was obviously a bad idea. It's just the most egregious flush of a billion dollars in the blind space rush that started in 2015 after SpaceX and Planet. Lately, not all investors in the company are feeling super bullish. Two years ago now, Fidelity, which invested in previous funding rounds, had privately slashed what they value their shares in relativity at by 21% on their balance sheet. And in terms of the funding situation, the latest raise for Relativity was a Series F round, which was actually a down round, meaning that the company was valued slightly less than the previous funding round, something that investors never like to see. They always like to see the funding rounds increasing in value. The early investors want to get a better return, having taken on additional risk by being so early in a company. The amount of money actually raised in this Series F round was quite low at, as well, at just $20 million. So a company the size of Relativity with over a 1,000 employees and all these expenses, $20 million certainly wouldn't last too long. I've also heard rumors that they do have a current funding round open and are looking to raise more capital, but there's nothing concrete I can offer you about that. Just mutterings I've heard on Twitter, so uh, nothing solid there. It does seem likely to me, though, that with no revenue and growing costs around the Terran R, they will probably need to raise more capital soon. This chart shared by Payload Space actually paints a pretty stark picture in terms of the capital used by the company. You can see that Outside of SpaceX, Relativity has raised just as much as Rocket Lab, having launched only once, and that being a failed launch, compared to Rocket Lab, which has a large space satellite manufacturing division that brings in the majority of its revenue, meaning that full $1.3 billion hasn't been going to rockets for Rocket Lab. As well, Firefly, ABL, and Stoke have raised significantly less funds than Relativity at this point, and those companies are also working on new up-and-coming rockets. So I think you can bet that part of the reason they push hard for more and more backlog is trying to attract funding 
in the latest investing round. After all, when you're talking about a rocket that's still two years away from a first launch, you've already got a backlog of like $1.6 billion. Do you really need to increase that backlog to, you know, two point something billion and push out way far into the future when those launches are going to happen? Do you really have a good enough idea of what your costs are going to be at that point? of how much inflation is going to grow. What if there's unexpected issues that balloons your, and then you're dealing with some issues around margins. I just think the only reason why you would sign even more backlog at this point is to try and raise that capital. Cause to me, you know, at a certain point, you've signed enough contracts, it's time to start delivering and actually realizing that revenue and signing more contracts isn't really the answer anymore. At least that's what I think. Let me know what you think down below. So that's the latest around Relativity Space. I will be watching keenly to see what happens with their latest funding round that I'm sure will happen at some point as they'll need additional capital, whether they'll have to value themselves less, whether they'll consider going public at some point. Fascinating story, massive pivot. Um, I don't like to be too critical of people actually working to build space hardware because I'm just some guy on the internet watching. So I'm just kind of trying to stick to the facts here. And I will say that I'm happy with where I've put my own money, which is Rocket Lab. And uh, I feel good about that investment right now. I would be happy to hear from Relativity fans down below, uh, you know, defending the company or telling me why you think they still have a great future. I'd be more than happy to continue the conversation in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it if you've made it to the end of the video. If you haven't already subscribed, I hope you'll consider doing that and those likes and comments always help out as well. I hope you have a great day and a great rest of the week and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.